Hello, it's the Randy Duck and welcome back for another video. And today I've got two replays to show you in the tier 8 French premium light tank, the Iraq 105 Proto. Now this is a light tank I really, really enjoy. And if you want to see the equipment and crew setup I'm running in this tank, you will see that at the bottom of the screen now. Now the first replay we have for you today, here is on the Sidgefield line. And this is tier 10 matchmaking. So we are bottom tier, which is obviously not ideal. But there's no artillery in the game. But there is three enemy light tanks. Again, not ideal. When you're playing the light tank, you don't really want to have to play against lots of other light tanks. Because, you know, for obvious reasons. Now, this particular light tank is not great at a head-on battle with other enemy light tanks. Because, you know, you don't have much armor. You're quite big to hit. Um, well, you say you don't have any armor, you're quite big to hit, and you don't have a lot of hit points. But you also have this sort of gun, which has got quite a long reload, but with 390 alpha. So it is what it is good at is being very sort of almost like that sort of mobile TD in a, in a way, where you can just sort of use a position like this and use your good concealment to your value and get some nice shots in. Now we have already taken out an enemy light tank, which is good, and you know what, I do really enjoy this tank. So, but right now we're just set up in the position that we want to cover the field and try and see if we can get as many shots in as uh, uh, the enemy light tanks and tanks in the field from distance as possible. Enemy machine crosses, we aim the shot. Now we don't have to lead the shell very much because we've got fantastic shell velocity in the standard rounds. You've got a shell velocity of 1,460. That basically allows you to hit shots you might not normally be able to hit if you've got sort of a slow shell velocity rounds. But it only has you know it does have a limitation it only has 200 pen which is not brilliant but it is enough to you know you're a light tank so you're able to sort of move around and get side shots in the cetric when you can uh for stuff you're going to struggle to pen you then have the heat shells of 250 penetration and that only has a shell velocity of 980. so right now you're a decent start to the game we've got you know a tiny bit of assistance 1500 of our own damage and we have killed a light tank but again, we're staying very, very passive because we keep getting shots available. And right now, we don't want to battle in the uh, town area. That's not going to be ideal for us as in a light tank. So we just want to try and deal with these threat from the field. Because if we're able to kill the tanks in the field, it will open up a lot of freedom for me to then you know, be a light tank and push forward and spot for my team. But right now, I'm just doing my best to kill the enemy light tanks. And we get a fantastic shot there in that enemy light tank as he jumps up mid-air and we confirm our second kill of the game and also taking care of another light tank putting us onto just over 2200 damage now but with them two light tanks uh, we'll just get blind fired there sorry which is it can happen because we keep shooting from the exact same position so someone's been smart enough to follow the traces and shoot me so that was not ideal we've lost quite a chunk of our hit points but with those light tanks removed um, there's only one enemy light tank and i'm thinking maybe i can go forward and try and do a spotting run now unfortunately for me the other enemy light tank the tier 10 does get detected and it kind of catches me out and i get spotted and i'm just in survival mode now trying to lose my spot as quickly as i can i do lose my spot and i was thinking about pushing to a1 and that was to try and take out the enemy tanks remaining in the field and try and out spot them that was my initial plan but then I just realised I can't cross there because of all the tank tracks and I think I'm probably going to get detected which I do and again now I'm in survival mode and I'm thinking you know what I probably actually can't play the field area like I would I'm not going to be able to deal with those tanks you know there's, there's too many and it's just going to be awkward you know I'm going to I haven't got many hit points left 660 so I'm just going to have to fall back you know I've not really got the support I need to try and deal with them to put you know the most the majority of our friendly team are battling in the town area so i'm thinking right what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna give it up i can't win there i'm just gonna let the enemy team push forward over that side and try and deal with the enemy team on the other side and then come back when they're sort of pushed out of their hole um and maybe we can try and deal with them then because obviously i can get back this map's not that big and i can get back for the resets fairly easily if i need to so if they go and sit in our cap circle at least they've been in a position where I can try and deal with them. But right now I'm going to see if we find anywhere else to try and get some damage. So I push forward in this town area. I'm going to see if I can get any side shots in this enemy heavy tank. Got to be very careful as I poke because we do spot an enemy object uh, 406 there. 
and again that's in an awkward situation we do have fantastic concealment though but what i'm going to do i'm going to reverse out now so if i do get detected i've got an escape plan um, and it's going to take me a, a shorter place of time to get out of there but we spotted an additional tank an enemy g source that's three tanks on this side now and i'm kind of thinking maybe there are two tanks with me if i keep these tanks detected maybe they'll be able to put some shots in um at least it makes it harder for me uh, tanks just to sit there but that's not really happening for me so i'm going to swap to the heat shells and see if we can get a shot into this enemy rhino there because i might have struggled to pen him with the apcr round so we do swap to the heat pen and trying to look for a, a shot where we can pick up any damage unfortunately he bounces i think he's actually got some space armor there and that's probably why the heat shell did bounce um, but thankfully the enemy object 416 does get taken out by our friendly bat chat who is kind of key to helping us win this game so it's worth giving them a shout out there um, and that gives us a little bit more freedom to try and move forward and see if we can deal with this rhino and make him move from that position but i'm also very conscious of that g saw who can clip me out very very quickly um, but it's still a very close game six versus six but you can see the enemy team who was in the field have now pushed forward into the town so I really kind of need to win this and I'm really help, um, thankful that the bat chat who is on full health had decided to push this g-saw because that is gonna you know if he dies it just gives me so much more freedom I do shoot the g-saw unfortunately I bounce I'm gonna pull back now I'm assuming the bat chat is gonna take him out but I don't know how many shells he's got left at this point um, so I think right I'll go in and finish him off and yeah uh, gun depression issues um, that was kind of poor on me and I missed a shot I should have took a bit more time and this g is still alive and I've just got to take care of this g because he's just going to keep me permanently spotted so I have to get rid of him. Thankfully we do, we confirm our third kill of the game and now we're just trying to lose our spot because once we've lost our spot that rhino's not going to outspot us and we should be able to then try and farm shots into him. So we do lose our spot and now we're going to sit, now you see we've taken an area map and this is why it was very important for that bat chat to make that push because I couldn't make that push by myself. I just wasn't going to be able to kill that G-Saw you know, alone. Um, and now he's taken care of. It just gives me more freedom. It's, you know, I've got this side of the map to try and deal with the enemy tanks. And I want to be trying to fight from a distance. You know, I'm in a light tank. I want to be taking the advantage of my decent concealment value. And, and just sort of play as that mobile TD, if you like. You know, I'm not a light tank, but that, I'm sort of playing as a mobile tank destroyer. We do bounce a shot off of that enemy medium. But this time we don't. And we put him now onto a one shot to us. So that's very, very good. We can see we can try and finish him off. That would be just take out another tank, try and even up the scores back to a three versus three. We do do so picking up our fourth kill, putting us under 3,400 damage now with 400 assistance. Haven't been able to get much assistance this game, but it's just how the lobby is gone. And we see an enemy uh, light tank here. We swap to the HG rounds, hoping to pen him with the HG and pick up the 480 damage rather than the 390. Turns out to be a mistake because we don't pen him and now he's still left on a two shot to us. Had I just shot the APCR, he would now be a one shot to us. So I was hoping just to get more damage with the HE, but it hasn't worked out that way. So I'm now left into a two versus two with our friendly back chat remaining and an enemy uh, Ramsapan the light tank and the enemy T14 bat uh, auto loading American tank destroyer. So I've got to be careful because I'm basically a two shot to these tanks. Obviously, the autoloader can kill me pretty quickly. Um, so, my main plan here is I was just trying to reverse so I could escape quickly, see if we can spot them. But now, our bat chat, who's very healthy, is going forward. I'm thinking, right, let's just stay with my bat chat here because um, I'm going to need his support. We're both mobile, we can both cover uh, a lot of the map quickly. Obviously, the enemy team are very mobile as well. We're both, you know, just four stealthy. Um, tanks left in this game you know both of the enemy teams are very stealthy and both of us are very stealthy so it's going to be an interesting one to see who's going to be able to outspot who it might come down to uh, who's got the best crew and uh, you know concealment values so uh, the bat chat has kindly let me know but he's got 30 seconds left on this reload uh, but it's very helpful information to know because i know for 30 seconds i haven't got any cover um, and it's always a good thing to do to let you know if you're playing those auto loading tanks um, and you're in a situation like this just let your platoon mate know you reload you know it's just useful information to know so he's probably coming up to about sort of 10 seconds left i would have thought now on his reload something i'm just trying to spot them because i don't know where they are right now um, and i just 
you know, where are these tanks? Where have they gone to hide? You know, have they just gone back to their base to cover their base? Um, I don't know, but we do spot this enemy uh, light tank. So we do actually outspot this light tank, um, and that's good information. Our bat chat knows where he is. He's going to work a different angle. We're thinking, right, well, let's just stay here. I still don't know where the enemy tank destroyer is. If I can keep this tank detected, then the bat chat might be able to work on an angle, and I might be able to get some shots in. He does move, he's forced to move, and we get a lovely shot in the move there, putting him onto a one shot now. I'm still targeted, and I'm guessing that might be from the tank destroyer, which I don't know where he is, because that bat chat is not looking at me right now. So I'm just trying to draw out this enemy tank destroyer, because I don't know where he is. He does get spotted, looking now to get a shot in. Unfortunately, missed that shot. He could potentially clip our bat chat if our bat chat's on reload. I have no idea how many shots this bat chat's got left. But it looks like he's got some. He puts one shot in and uh, misses another. And I'm just trying to cover my friendly um, friendly friend here. And we do manage to squeeze in that shot, picking up our fifth kill. Bring us then to replay number one, which, remember, was a tier 10 matchmaking. We do get five kills, 4,000 damage, 400 assistance. I kind of just wanted to show this one just because it was tier 10. Um, you know, I know, you know, just wanted to show this tank is still very capable when you are bottom tier. So... We have one more replay to come, and let's move on. Hey, so welcome back to replay number two. This time we are on Dragon Ridge. No artillery again. We are in tier nine matchmaking, and we're platooned up with our pal, Swindle321. But this game is very much uh, about the finish and not the start, and it kind of just shows when things don't go well, uh, just don't give up, basically, because you're gonna see at the start of this game, Things don't quite go to plan. So initially we just push up and you can, I can already see a lot of my team are on the other side. So maybe it's not the best place to be, but I'm just trying to get a bit of information from my team at the start. Just spot and try and find where the enemy team are. But there is, I think, three enemy light tanks. Again, this is not good. It's not a good tank to be battling light tanks close quarters. And as you can see, well, I found the enemy light tanks, uh, but they have found me too. And already I'm now pretty much on a one shot and in full flight survival mode just hoping to get out of there and i've got no nothing for it no assistance yeah not gone great not a great start to the game um couldn't well it could have gone a bit worse i could have died uh, i'm still alive but that's kind of the mindset you got to have now because look yes i've lost all my my hit points very early doors uh, but don't give up because it's it's never over till it's over you can still have a good game and um, so I have, to, I have decided I'm literally going to abandon that side because I just do not want to stand there and fight three light tanks who are just going to be driving around like madmen. Um, it's not going to be uh, beneficial for me. Um, I feel like I'm just going to get taken out. So I've decided, well, let's just go to the other side and see if we can get any damage on the other side and, and see what we can do here. So again, we're pushing the position now where we're almost playing as a sort of tank destroyer covering our tanks in the front, which I guess is not, you know, not a typical light tank play i'm not sort of spotting for him but it's just how the situation has um found itself so i've got covering shots here on my team looking for a shot of this t28 he does pull out i'm hoping to get a shot through the driver and track him in place we do track him in place unfortunately we don't pen and he uses his repair kit so he's got out of safety and we don't get any track assistance there but i do now have shots at this enemy uh, heavy tank there at the top Picking up our first pen of the game, and we do actually spot that tank, so we could potentially get some assistance if they get spotted again. I'm just looking to cover my team, because you can see the majority of our team are playing guy in the sort of 7, 8, 9 line, um, and this, I'm thinking, right, what am I going to do? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm probably deciding if I can win this side, if we can win this side, maybe I can push around and, and try and get a bit of vision that way. We do manage to finish that enemy T28, and I pick up my first kill, which is nice. He also taken out of a tank in a position which would have spotted me if I had pushed down that side. And with that T28 destroyed, I'm thinking, is there any tanks down the K0? Because if none of the enemy tanks have gone down the K0, I might be able to do a loop round on the enemy T. Because I'm concerned about I need to try and pick up the pace of this game. Uh, although we're winning, I, I kind of sense a lot of the enemy tanks were sort of pushing upon our base um, and I wanted to see if I can I need to get involved in this game a bit more I managed to pick up a couple of pens and a kill uh, but let's see what else we can do so now we're going to try and push around and try and use our vision we know there was some heavy tanks you can see spotted just on my right there and I'm thinking can I find an angle to shoot that tank unspotted 
um, which would always be ideal for on a one shot can we find an opportunity to shoot that tank unlit um, and that is my plan um, it looks like uh, does he get taken out I'm not sure or does he just lose his spot no he, he is still alive there um, I'm thinking can we get a shot there but I'm thinking no it's too close I'm just going to get lit and they could just push us or there's probably going to be tanks on the other side of these ridges which could cover in, get covering shots into me if I get detected there but now I can look for shots while I've got this rock to my left to try and shield me from that so this enemy uh, tank is on a one shot so I'm going to lean on him he's not going to know where I'm here I've got time to pick up the kill I do pick up that kill and whew, almost uh, get shot by the tanks which I was going to say which are covering them thankfully I don't but that just lets you know they're definitely there I'm just trying to lose my spot now now this game is very close and it's a nine versus eight situation uh, we haven't done a great deal but we have confirmed two kills and picked up a thousand damage we're going to see if we can extend our vision to see if we can spot any of these tanks I probably should be reversing at this point because this I do get that shot in but you can see how much longer that took me to escape that was kind of lazy play by myself. I could have lost my tank for that. Had I reversed out then and did it a little bit slower than that, then it basically gives me the freedom to get back if I need to. But thankfully for me, it went unpunished. So you can see now I am going to just take this a little bit slower because we know this tank's here. I'm just trying to see if I can keep him spotted to see if he gets shot by my mediums because he was kind of in the open. Uh, it looks like though he has trying to, he's, I think he's fallen back basically because I'm not detecting and I'm not getting spotted either. So it seems like it has fallen back. I'm going to try and potentially make the cross over to the other side. If I can make the cross, I can try and stay safe. And I've got this medium to my right who can potentially cover me. So he has got detected, he's got spotted over that side. Now I'm going to reverse over again because, um, yeah, to try and keep it as safe as I can. Uh, do see an opportunity to shoot this E75. I'm looking for a shot. I do hit my shot, but now I'm detected. Uh, but I have managed to get into safety behind these sort of ridge lines here. And I pick up a good bit of assistance here for spotting those tanks, which was ultimately the, the plan, really. So I'm kind of now in a situation where if they push me, they should take damage from our friendly medium tank. That's my plan. It's in a 5 versus 5. Gets to the sort of later stages of the game in a 5 versus 5 where. Um, light tanks come very vital i think there is still uh is it two enemy light tanks remaining uh looking to get a shot into this su puts them onto a one shot um our friendly platoon mate squindle does get taken out um and it's kind of just left down to sort of me and my i've got that medium covering me he's the main one i'm just hoping that he's got covering shots into us here uh, i'm getting pushed though by this one shot td i bounce the shot which is really not good for me but thankfully he's turreted i do a little juke I should potentially get the kill, but it looks like he's going to turn in time and I'm not going to risk that. So I'm going to pull back because so he's a turretless TD. If he comes charging in on us, we should in fact get the kill before he gets in, as long as I don't bounce again. And that's exactly what happens. He wasn't able to get his gun down in time. I took my time because I knew I had that extra second and we picked up the third kill of the game, taking out one of their tier 9 tank destroyers, leaving us into the slight advantage of a 4 versus 3. Still though, uh two enemy light tanks uh remaining and yeah we've got still a very close game looking to get a shot at this e uh 50 here who is a potential is a potential one shot to us if i roll average and he doesn't have any damage re reduction perks on so yeah i could potentially finish him off with one shot I'm going to go this as slowly as I can. Remember, I've got that medium tank who can potentially cover me, which I'm really hoping he's going to put one shot into him. Uh, I do get my shot in. Unfortunately, oh, so yeah, I do I do pick him up in one kill. I was about to say I don't kill him in one shot, but I do. And I pick up my fourth kill of the game, putting us under 3,000 damage now and 1,600 assistance. And now into a four versus two. <clears throat> Still got to be a very careful, though, because this... So these two enemy tanks and it could potentially be difficult for me to spot um so it looks like our friendly medium tank was going to go into their cap circle and if he does go into their cap circle i'm going to get myself into position to uh cover him but i think he's bought better of it because he would kind of be sitting duck if he goes into cap circle on this map especially against two sort of mobile light tanks they're going to be able to outspot them so I'm looking to get a shot into the G, so I really want to hit this shot because it'd be kind of vital if I can take out this tank here. And we do, and we pick up our fifth kill, bring us into a four versus one, 
with the opportunity to get the top gun now looking to see if we can get a shot into this enemy uh, light tank as he leaves i think he's having a really good game this enemy light tank i do actually know the plan he's having a, he's having a decent game so um but it's good so i know he's a good player so i have got to be careful because if you look at the hit points of our friendly tank although this is a one versus four like we've definitely got the advantage here um we're all very low so so i have got to tread carefully that i don't throw my tank away now at this point it looks like our friendly you know we've got friendly covering tanks you know i've got a 2d two tank destroyers on the top of that ridge um so i am going to try and push forward and see if we can spot this tank now he's just fired two shots it's a four shot auto loading light tank so he may have gone on reload um i don't know that it looks like he hasn't gone on reload he's put one shot into me now i know he's got one shot left and i am a one shot so thankfully he did not roll high enough to take me out that wouldn't have been great now i think he was he wasn't a one shot to us if we were firing the standard rounds he is a one shot to us if we fire the he um, and we roll average so I've swapped to the HE, and um, how you can see when I used the HE in the last game, I didn't pen, but I definitely can pen this tank with the HE if I avoid um, hitting those sort of track areas or hitting the gun. Um, so I've got to be careful because this is now one versus four. I'm a one shot, and he's a four shot autoload, and our other tanks aren't particularly health, uh, healthy either. So this is a very, very close game right now, even though it's a one versus uh, three. So I'm just going to be careful. Our tank is now going in the cap circle, which that in theory is going to, well, he's going to be forced at some point to come and get that reset. You know, he, he has to come and get the reset. Um, so then I'm thinking, right, let's just get in a position where I'm best served to cover him because I imagine, though, he's a good player. He's probably just tried, he's probably tried to relocate from where he was previously. Um, and I'm just going to sit here, just, you can see I'm just waiting trying to put myself in the position that in theory the tanks who get in the cap circle is probably going to be the, the tanks he's looking to get his shots in now it's kind of important one thing to know when you're fighting against an auto loading tank is if you can always count the amount of shells he has fired you know try and try and remember try and work out how many shots you know it's always good if you see a tank and you think oh, i don't know what that is go and look at the stats find out how many shots it has if it's an auto loader because then you can count the shells he's fired and you know if he's fired all his shells, his tank's got four shells, if he fires all of them, he's going to be on reload. Now, I know he's just fired uh, at least one there. I think he has probably been farming the tanks in the cap, and I suspect he's on reload. Or, you know, he's, I know, at least know where the trace has come from, so I know whereabouts he is. I'm going to see if I can try and spot him and try and pick up a shot here. Now, I do find him, and thankfully I get that shot in, and thankfully I use the HE rounds because... That picked up the kill in the end because I wouldn't have rolled high enough with the standard rounds. And we do finish the game with a top gun for, well, 3,700 damage. Getting the ace tanker, um, getting some assistance there. And it was kind of just one I wanted to show you because the game did not start well. Um, and, you know, I stayed in the game and you can still go and have a game. And if you look at the uh, enemy light tank in MX-39T, he has a really good game there. So, unfortunate for him, but he did have a really good game. So... That's it for the video. Thank you so much for your support. And as always, happy tanking. Enemy in sight.